I was to debate on what would be the best or ideal screening test for the prevention of cervical cancer in Africa as a whole. When, what I took into consideration is that there are several screening methods that have been put into test in low resource countries and in other countries as well. But what I particularly looked at the, at the individual test and, and checked the suitability, suitability of these tests on whether they would apply in Africa. There are several methods, I mean, that have been described as early as the 1960s. Initially, we had the PEP test, which was one of the first screening tests that was I mean, introduced by Papa Nicola, which was a Greek surgeon. Actually, it was long before that. But there have been problems with that form of screening test, in that the test has to be done by professionals, health professionals, and then the specimens have to be sent to some laboratory. And the problem with that is that, I mean, when we start with laboratory, firstly, we start with the transport services. I mean, who is going to take these specimens from the center where them and they are, they are done to the laboratories? And then secondly, we don't have, I mean, tech, enough laboratory technicians in Africa who will be in, in, able to interpret these tests. And secondly, because there's a waiting period between the time that the testing is done, there's an interval. And where I come from in Cape Town, which is supposed to be a developed sort of city, it takes about a month for these results to come out. And the problem is tracing these women and getting the results back to the women has always been problematic. You find that there are patients with abnormal pap smears, but it's, there's difficulty in accessing these women to inform them about the results. There are other options that have been introduced into Africa, and are, the idea of those, these are I mean, a test using direct visualization of the cervix. This is supposed to be a simple test where very dilute acetic acid is applied to the woman's cervix, or there's another solution called lugos iodine that's applied to the cervix, and results can be received Im immediately. And the, um, the main benefit of that is that the interpretation of the results is immediate, and it, treatment can be initiated at the same time. But the problem with, with those studies as well, if you look at those studies, they were done by people who were well trained and there was enough quality control and, and, and checking that the people who are performing this, I mean, do, doing these tests are, know exactly what they are doing. So the problem with that is that there's a little bit of overcall, that is women would otherwise have had normal services, would have been called abnormal, and because the treatment is initiated at the time at the point of care, there's a tendency for over-treatment as well. For Africa, it's not it's much better than having no form of treatment at all. So it is acceptable in some African settings. That is the visual inspection of the cervix, which is the lower part of the womb. If you look at Africa as a whole and understanding the community, it would have to be a, a test that understands the communities that are, that are in Africa. It would have to be a test that is simple. It would have to be a test that is, I mean, initiated at the point of care. The results are acceptable at the time. At the time. And also it should be a test that has a high detectable rate. And that test, unfortunately, the other thing that one has to factor in is the cost of the, te of the test. There is, I mean, currently HPV testing, and that's su supposed to have the, the best results in, in, uh, in reliability as well, because that's one of the characteristics of the test, that it must be a very reliable and valid test. Unfortunately, we're still struggling with uh, the problem of cost, and hopefully that the, the companies, if they could bring down the prices of, of this testing, it should be the ideal test for that. The other thing that makes it quite ideal is that the predictive value of it is quite high. If the woman tests negative, then it would be very easy to reassure the woman that she's is not harboring the human papilloma virus, which is the causative organism for the cervical cancer. And even the intervals of screening, I mean, can be increased. Whereas with pap smears, I mean, if you look at other guidelines, and that's the problem with Africa as well, we're considering guidelines that come from outside Africa and do not factor in the circumstances in Africa. So if the woman tests negative, I mean, people like, I mean, Sanka, Dr. Sanka Ryan, also as accepts that, I mean, if the woman can test negative, then one can re assure the woman that she can even one negative uh, HPV test is enough in a woman's lifetime to reassure her that her chances of developing cervical cancer are quite minimal.